Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning and Merry Christmas. It's so great to be together on this Christmas day. We're so thankful that we get to share just a few moments with you and with your family and we get to be together on this Christmas day. We know that you're enjoying it from home. Uh, maybe you're watching in your living room or you're at a relative's house or maybe you're watching on your phone. We are just so thankful that we get to be together with you. Here's what we want to do this morning. We want to spend just a, a few moments together. We're going to uh, sing a few worship songs together and then we're going to read through the greatest story ever told. Anybody know who the greatest story ever told? It's the birth of Jesus. And so we want to share that with you today. So here's what I would love for you to do. I want you right now to gather all the family together, put the toys down maybe for just a second, clean up the wrapping paper, make a spot there in the living room, bring all the family together so we can uh, worship together and then read through the Christmas story together. Sound good? Yes. Hey, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's join our worship team for a few songs as we sing about joy to the world and that Christ is worthy of it all. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us
wasn't that an amazing time of worship together? Come on, he is worthy of it all. The day that Jesus came into the world, it was joy to all the world. Man, what wonderful songs for us to sing to remind us of the greatest gift that we've ever been given. Over the last couple of weeks, we've talked about the greatest gift that we've ever been given. We've talked about the day that the world changed. And it all centers around the, more, the whole reason why we're celebrating this morning. It's the birth of Christ, right? That's what it's all about. There's so many other great things. You probably enjoyed a wonderful breakfast this morning. The house smells like bacon and pancakes and all kinds of good things. And those things are wonderful. And the giving of gifts and spending time with family, it's so important. But it's really all about the birth of Christ. And so what we want to do now, we want to read the, the Christmas story with you. And we're going to read that out of the book of Luke. And so if you want to grab a Bible or grab your phone, whatever you've got closest to you, and follow along, we're going to start in the book of Luke in chapter 1 in verse 26. We're going to be reading from the NIV. This is the greatest story ever told. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 says this. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. In verse 29, it says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And in verse 34, it says, How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In chapter 2 it says, In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem in the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. In verse 5, it says, He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for a baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room available for them. In verse 8, it says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And in verse 13, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. In verse 16, it says this, So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. And on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus 
the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. Wow. wow what an amazing, amazing story. And what an amazing gift. It's the greatest gift that you and I have ever been given is the gift of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. God gave us Jesus as the greatest gift that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. It's the greatest gift you and I have ever been given. And this is the greatest story ever told. And the way that we keep stories alive is by continuing to tell them. And so here's what I want to encourage you today. And before we pray for you, I don't know what the rest of your day looks like. Maybe you're going to go to family's house uh, this afternoon or this evening. Maybe you have a few stops to make. But here's my encouragement to you. At some point along the day, gather some people around, gather the family around and tell the story of Jesus. Read through it together and let us keep our eyes fixed on the real reason for the season and the greatest gift that we've ever been given and the greatest story ever told. You know, wherever you are this morning, we pray that you're surrounded by loved ones, that you have the hope of Jesus living in your heart. And maybe if you're watching and you don't, it's just one step away. All you have to do is ask the Lord to come into your heart and you can open up the greatest gift that's ever been given. It's just one step away. Hey, let us pray for you today. Father, we thank you so much just for the wonderful gift that you've given us in Jesus. And the whole purpose that we have to be able to celebrate this morning is because the freedom that we found because of his life and his entrance into this world. And so we just say thank you. What a wonderful gift you've given us. And so, Lord, as we go about our day today and all the wonderful things and hanging out with friends and family and enjoying time with our kids and loved ones and our spouses and as we share gifts with one another, to show each other the love that we have. Lord, may we just keep our eyes fixed on you and the birth of Jesus, the real reason for the season. And we pray it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for spending this morning with us. We pray that you have an amazing rest of your day. Eat lots of good food. Get lots of good time with your family. Play with the kids. Test out all the new toys and presents. And you have an amazing day. So from us to you this morning, we want to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Feliz Navidad.